Welcome to Nevertheless Podcast with Bidemi Makmodi, a show dedicated to organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. Today, you would learn how to discover your essence and live more powerfully. Hello there, and welcome to the Nevertheless Show, a show for organic leaders and leaderpreneurs. And in this concluding episode of the Umbrella Series, we are talking about something phenomenal that I believe that will transform your life. I mean, the first three episodes have been something else, and I can't wait to see what we're going to enjoy in this fourth episode. And of course, I have with me Pastor Bidemi Mark Mordi. Hey guys, good day, wherever, whatever time you're watching this. This is the Nevertheless Show, a show for organic leaders and leader perennials. Hello, John. How did the third episode do to you? It hits me so, so strong. Yes. So strong. Um, our last episode was on the focus on the family. family. We're looking at pillars that we must make sure we are focused on and we give priority of place in 2024 to ensure that we have a great year. And the last episode, we looked at family. Um, we looked at the pillar of family and where family holds and why we must pay attention to the ones that are closest to us. We talked about the fact that they are the only ones that would remain should everyone else choose to go. We looked at the fact that because we're familiar with with them. They are also the ones we are prone to take Take for granted the fastest. But we said that we need to intentionally curate a kind of relationship with our families so that um, we can deliver on all of the things that God has called us to receive the accolades outside. And when we come home, there'll be someone waiting for us to say, welcome, and thank you. I'm proud of you. Now, I know that everybody wants to be told someone is proud of them on social media, but I think that the most meaningful um, commendation that I have received and I look forward to is when my children and my husband and my siblings and my mother say to me, oh, you did really well there. Oh, we look up to you for this and all of that. So family is important, but that's not what we're talking about in this episode. In this final episode of the series, we're looking at another pillar. What pillar are we looking at this time, John? We're looking at the pillar of relationships. Relationships. Because remember, we've looked at the pillar of God. We said that everything, God must be priority first and priority in all the things we will do in 2024. Then we also looked at the pillar of purpose. We said that to live a life that is a life of legacy, we must know the why. We talked about purpose statements and how to craft Craft them. Then we went on to talk about the pillar of family. Um, That was very sobering for all of us in the studio, but it is important that we have this conversation. And this final pillar is the pillar of relationship. Now, every blessing that man receives comes from God. God is the one that blesses us, is the one that adds to us, is the one that brings us to the place where we become famous and distinguished. That was what he said um, when he was speaking to Abraham. He said, I'll make you famous and distinguished. So it is in our interest, you know, and it is God's plan to bring us to a place where we are blessed thoroughly. But what I have learned is while all blessings come from God, he passes those blessings through the hands of people. Mm. Someone would always be the connector between you and your next blessing. Blessing. You are seated here because Pastor Richard connected us, isn't it? And Pastor Richard is in my life because Pastor Mayoko connected connected us. Mm. It connected him with me and me with him. Yes. All of the blessings you will enjoy in life will be brought to you by God through the hands of another person. It is why you want to make sure you give intentional and deliberate consideration to your relationships in 2024. If nothing good is going to happen to you that will not be used, God will not use a person, then how can you not pay attention to relationships to the people in your life and give them room? Mm. So relationships, you'll be like, is this not the same as family? No. no. I'm talking of people you meet in the course of your journey, people from different nations and many things and many things. They make a difference in your life. I'll give you a personal example. In 2021, I had 
to have some surgery. And that surgery affected my health in ways that I cannot even be able to explain. So for at least one year, I was suffering badly. It affected my productivity levels dropped from like a hundred to like, maybe if I'm even lucky, 40%. I, who was writing and releasing four books, five books, six books in a year, I could barely release two books, wow. you know, you know, in, in, in the course of the year. Yeah. It was really bad. And I didn't know what to do. I've spoken to my doctor here and he didn't really give me a solution. I tried to seek a second opinion. That person was so brash that I felt violated. So I didn't want to work wow. with them. But I was suffering, and that was imparting upon my work and many things. But last year, um, in October, I had the opportunity to go to Canada. And before I left for Canada, some lady that is part of our CYM family invited me to come to her place. It wasn't even in the city that I was at. It was four hours, almost four hours out of, you know, I planned to stay at my brother's in Canada. But I don't, I felt the need to go. So I said, yes. And I went, got there, you know, and of course, some, at some point during that trip, I made the trek over to hers. Yeah. Turns out she was a doctor. Wow. And um, she started to talk to me because uh, again, you see that thing about being vulnerable and authentic on the prayer call I'd always shared when I was suffering. And she said, oh, I wanted to just understand what it was with your health. I wanted to see if there was any way we could help you. And in just being vulnerable and sharing with her, her and her colleague decided to take my case on board and find a solution for me. Wow. And in two months, in two months, I'm not 100% yet. But through that relationship, I'm at least 80%. Oh. I who couldn't go up my stairs in my house without panting and sometimes feeling faint. I was in Abelkuta. I went up Ulumo Rock. Wow. And I didn't Brilliant. need to sit down to catch Catching my breath. breath. Was brought through, totally through a relationship, relationship. at no cost to me. Hmm. The point I'm making is the reason why you want to pay attention to your relationships is number one, you want to reflect on them mm. because there are some relationships around you that are obsolete. You do not need them in this season, but they crowd your space. And so the ones you need cannot come. come you need to do it with, with them. There are some relationships that the only thing they bring in your life is drama. Mm. Everything is a song and a dance with them. They deplete your energy. energy. They don't add to you. You want to do away with those relationships. Maybe not throw them away totally, but put a buffer between you and mm -hmm. them. You understand that? Yes. There are some relationships, they don't like you, but they pretend they like you. Mm. You know, they're, and they're the ones that have your 411. They know you inside out. It is time to begin to put them on the outer space so that you bring new people in. Mm. You want to bring people into your life who are your connectors, those who are invested in your life enough to introduce you to the people that will take you where you need to go. Mm. You want to have relationships with people who are confidants, the people that when you tell them something, no matter what is happening, you won't hear them, that elsewhere. thing you've told them elsewhere. Mm. You want to bring into your life critics. You need critics, the people who criticize you not to run your down but the people who criticize you so that you get better hmm. and you want to have in your life cheerleaders those who you, no matter what you do you can't do wrong in their sight they're cheering you on because you need the energy that comes from there to continue to run to arrive where you need to go hmm. the point is that we are not um, calibrated. God did not put us together to do life by ourselves. ourselves. We need 
people that surround us, but we need the right people. Mm -hmm. So for me, the rule of relationship is make sure you have the right ones. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have the right ones. Don't just surround yourself with a crowd who don't love you. You know, how do people surround themselves with people who who are the ones that release your most precious secrets on social media? Mm. Those things should never happen How, because it will mean like you are in bed with your enemy. Mm. So you need to make sure that you review your relationships. Ask yourself, you see, I learned that it is not a bad thing at all to ask, what does this person bring into my life? Mm. Of course, make yourself a winning relationship for other people. But what do you, what do they bring into your life? Why do they enjoy the pride of place that they enjoy in your life? These things are critical, they're important. They will change your life if you understand the power of relationship. Think about a David and Jonathan. Look at that relationship. Even after Jonathan was dead and gone, that relationship continued to give. Gave it to the life of Mephibosheth. Just because someone had the right relationship. Take a look at Ruth and Naomi. Because of a relationship that she had, you know, she married her son. She was a mother-in-law. She didn't need to become her friend or her confidant or anything. Yes. But see that relationship, the way it transitioned until Ruth became one that was written and grafted in. She was one of the first that were grafted in, into the genealogy of, you know, into, yes, that line, simply because she did well by the relationships that she had. When we started this conversation in this series, I gave us the word for for 2024, that God says that he's granted us access to what? To, get, to the power to, to get. The power to get. So if you have access, who's holding the door open for you? Hmm. You know, I, you know, when I taught on access, you know, um, on the eve of, of the new year, I told us that w the first thing about access is activation. Mm. Because you can have an access card that yes, is not activated. activated. Yes. And so it's like your ATM card. You have money in the bank, but your ATM expired and you got a new one. The bank will give you all that, you know, one big letter that says you need to go and activate your ATM. Yes. To activate the ATM, I hear yes. that some can do it online now, but most of the time you have to go to the ATM or go to the bank and then they will activate it for you. Imagine that you did not activate your ATM card. Mm. You have 10 million, but you need 100,000. How are you going to access it? If you put the ATM on, in the ATM machine, lay your hands on the machine and begin to pray. <laughs> that machine will not dispense it's money. It's do you understand? Yes. Because it doesn't recognize the card. Okay, do a vigil around the card before you take it to the ATM same machine. Thing. It is the same thing. A lot of us don't understand that relationships are critical for where we are headed. Hmm. Hmm. And so because of that, we do not forge relationships. We do not invest in relationships. We do not nurture relationships. We treat our relationships anyhow. Hmm. And when that happens, we are the ones that suffer. See how anointed Joseph was. Hmm. See how on point, everything that Joseph did, he did well. Excellent. And yet nothing was going to bring him before Pharaoh. Not Until the butler said, I know a man. I know a man. Can you see that? <laughs> no, a man's gift makes room for him after somebody opens the door for after you. After someone opens the door. Can you see it? Yes. So it, it, we're too quick to discard people. Hmm. We're too quick to say we don't want people around us. We are too quick. I, I, I'm talking to myself because um, I used to take, tell people that I'm a one-woman riot squad. I can get it done all by myself. It will break my back, but I will get it done. But I can't tell you what I've enjoyed with people around me. People who see before I even speak. And even this week, I was, you know, someone was 
chatting with me and um, I was going to say to her, oh, make sure that you listen to the message from Sunday because she doesn't live in Lagos. And because we didn't stream, she, I said they will put it on YouTube soon. Make sure you go and listen to it because we're laying foundation for our year. And I said, oh, we couldn't stream because our gen broke down in the course. Oh, and that was all it took. She didn't let me finish. Before I finished typing, she has sent money to fix the jet. Wow. Do you understand? It's not about the money. It is about the fact that relationships are key to many places we want to go. Hmm. Now, not every relationship is an empowering one. Okay. But when you find one, treat it right. Treat it right. All relationships are not alive all seasons. When a season ends or, or a relationship has to go into haters, just allow it. But still treat it with honor. Treat yeah. it with decorum. Don't go around bad-mouthing the people because yes. another season may come and, and they'll be the ones that you people. need again. And there's access to them. Do you understand yes. this? Yeah. So you want to succeed in 2022, the 2024, I beg your pardon. The best, first thing you did is say you don't need any anybody. You'll be standing still for a long time. God, if you walked outside of this building today and you saw dollars raining from the sky, EFCC will soon get there. <laughs> the police and EFCC will soon get there. God does not rain money. At all. God is going to put the money in someone's hand. He's going to give you a skill, a product or a service that, and then someone is going to introduce you to the person. It's exchange, exchange. value. Hmm. Hmm. So many times, many of the things that we are trusting God and praying to God for and, you know, expecting God to answer by himself, many times it puts it in people and puts those people around us. Exactly. When God said to me, I've given you access to the power to get. Like I said, I'm still unpacking it. But it showed me that we've been, a lot of us have been praying wrong. Hmm. Oh, Father, give me a house. Our prayer should be, Father, give me the power to get a house. Yes. And to get a house, I just need to know someone hmm. who will say to me, oh, there's a building there somewhere, and I, I think it's within your budget. That's, information is the key. I'm telling Once you. someone has the information, it, it becomes what was hitherto difficult becomes really easy. A clockwork. Just like that. And you're like, oh, really? Yes, really. So you need to know the right people. One thing that upsets me, if I can use that expression, about us believers is that we don't believe that we can choose our friends. Hmm. The Bible says, oh, no man, nothing but, but love. Yes. It didn't say everybody has to be, be your friend. friend. Hmm. People think, oh, this is too cold. But that's the reality. You are on a journey. I'm on a journey. You won't enjoy this proximity if you cannot positively impact my journey. Not at my age. I'm not playing with sand. Even for my children, I tell them, don't let people hover around you who are not going anywhere with you. Yes. They just take up space. And the thing about people who take up space is they deny other people who have value to come, to, in. Uh, to come in. Why do you want to burden yourself like that? The Bible is replete with men and women who by relationship grew. And the Bible is also replete with men and women who by relationship, nothing else good came out of them. In one relationship, think about a Samson and Delilah. It was a relationship yeah. that brought him to yeah. his downfall. Sad. So think about the power that relationships have and ask yourself, do I have the right one? Think about Hezekiah. It was a relationship with the king of Babylon. King, he was sick. King of Babylon sent emissaries to go and visit him. He was so excited uh, that he opened the treasures mm -hmm. of, of Israel mm -hmm. and showed to them. And before we knew what was happening, Bible is recording treasures of darkness. Simply because one man compromised an entire nation by a relationship. Mm -hmm. Think about Absalom, David, and Ahitophel. 
Ahitophel was a relationship that David, David had that, that turned against David and then began to fuel the embers of, of rot between him and his That's son. Awesome. So we need to pay attention to our relationships. Ask yourself, how did this one serve me? This one has been in my life for seven years. How has it served my destiny? What value have they brought? And if they've not brought any value, don't, I'm not asking discard. I'm saying limit hmm. their access to you. Limit their access to you. Value is why God places people in our lives. Honor is how we get to pull that value out of them. If you've noticed, whether we talked about God, or we talked about purpose, or we talked about family, or we talked about relationship, one thing that works in every one of them is the concept of honor. Do not joke with it. Okay. I think we should go on a break now. And after the break, we'll come back with more interesting things still on relationships. In a world filled with many fears and discouragement, life often becomes a burden. For those who know the way, life is just simple. Do not worry, you're not alone on this life's journey, as Bidemi McMordy shares powerful insights and principles from her everyday work and life experiences in her book, Nevertheless. Nevertheless is a book designed to encourage and equip you to face life with courage, hope, and determination. Get a copy of Nevertheless and other books written by Bidemi McMordy, like The Wisdom of the Seed, Honor, The Theology of Work, and so much more from a bookstore nearby. Or call 080-905-63555. Or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmordy.com to place your order. I guarantee you, you will make it. Nevertheless. Well, welcome back to this concluding part of this episode where we have been talking about relationships. And I would like to kick off with a question. You said something about investing in relationships, mm -hmm. right? Especially the one that matter. Mm -hmm. How would you advise that mm -hmm. someone invests in relationships? Because when you say invest, it means different things to different people. Yes. So what, what do you really mean by invest in relationships? Okay, so I don't have all the theory, but there's a book called The Five Love Languages by Gary Chapman, I believe. Yes. That's somewhere to start. Know your people. Okay. If you know the people that are around you and you know yourself, then you'll be able to curate and nurture your relationships properly. Um, so gifts work for me. I am a gift giver and I love to receive gifts. So if someone, if I were going to nurture my relationship with someone, I'll be giving them gifts. It's just natural what I do. Mm -hmm. And if someone wanted to reciprocate that, gifts are very effective with me, just so you know, right? Do you get it? But give the gift of presence mm. to show up when others will not show up. Just mm. show up. Yesterday, I went to be with one of my sister who lost her mother. Okay. It, I couldn't, ch I'm not able to change the situation. But I'm going to, I went, I was there for her. I just sat down, we talked, talked, talked. I was there for about two hours. Then I left. Give the gift of your time. Mm. Mention them, prop, you know, positively in, in rooms where they are not. You know, my coach does that. She's very honoring of relationships. And no, my coach will not enter a room that can benefit me and walk out of that room without mentioning my name. She would not do it. Mm. She won't do it. She would mention my name. She said to them, there's this woman in Africa, in Nigeria, and she's doing excellent things. And she would just sell me. Whether it takes or it doesn't take, it really doesn't matter. So these are practical things you can do in investing in a relationship. relationship. Invest truth. Hmm. Because we always think, oh, I can't tell people the truth. There are very few people who tell us truth. Hmm. So if you are the one relationship who tells me truth, I'm going to hold on to you if I value truth. And I value truth, so I want people who tell, tell me. I, one of the things that, one of my greatest turn-offs for me is sycophancy. You know, exaggerating things, telling me lies just so that I can feel good. It, for me, I translate it to me, you do not like me. You might have translated it to me, you are trying to preserve me. I don't need to be preserved. I need to be better. 
Mm. So invest truth in your relationships. I, everyone who's in a relationship with me at that level, we know that my thing is truth. I've told truth where people did not appreciate it and they took me out of their circle. Okay. It didn't matter to me because no matter what, the one thing they will not be able to say about me is that I'm not forthright. Mm. I'm truthful and I'm forthright. So invest truth in a relationship. You know, be there. You know, sometimes being there is not to give a solution. Being there is just to be present and just be there. Be there. Be there. You know, celebrate the thing, their wings with them. Right. You know, yeah. Celebrate their wings with them. I'm proud of you. Send them a message and say, I saw you on TV. I'm so proud of you. You're doing so much. Hmm. Hmm. You know, I, I think I should I should come in a little bit here. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a world where there is a lot of competition. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. This person wants to outdo this other mm -hmm. person. That mm -hmm. person wants to outshine mm -hmm. this other person. So I want to ask you personally, mm -hmm. how have you been able to, you know, not keep competition in your heart in relating with other people? And you can be genuinely well, excited for them. Maybe because I'm not, I have no competitive bone. Mm -hmm. I never won one thing in my life because I don't compete. I might have won maybe if I even entered. I don't enter competition. So it's my lazy side. Do you understand? So maybe that's why. Mm. But I am a genius in my own right. Just not your kind of genius. genius right? It took me a while to build myself to believe in myself like that. But I do now. So I'm not intimidated by what you have. Mm. And if for any reason, especially on social media, seeing your posts begin to intimidate me, I will snooze you for 30 days because I need to keep my system sane, sane. and clean mm. to be able to relate with you at that level. And if I have others that are falling over themselves to compete with for your attention, I will step back. Hmm. I know how to do that. I will step back, but I will step back in such a way that you know that yeah. when you are looking for solid, you can come to me. Hmm. But I will not compete with people for anyone's attention. Hmm. I will not even compete with someone for my husband's attention. Hmm. I won't do it. I'm too old for those kinds of things. So there's no competition there. He knows the value that I am. And so he should know to know that I, I won't do that. So if I will not, that's my most vital relationship on earth. If I will not compete in that regard, why would I compete for anything else, any other person's attention? Mm. Mm. And sometimes relationships is not so that they respond to you or they reciprocate to you. Relationships will be so that you will get better. Mm. It's for you. You know, if God commits the blessings through the hands of people, and I'm in a relationship with you, and I, it's crystallized for me what God is committing into my life through you. It is my burden. I have the burden of proof to steward that relationship, relationship. well. Yeah. And so there are relationships I am stewarding in this season that the other party is not invested in. Mm. But I'm stewarding them because I know that even in their lack of investment, they value add to me. Mm. Mm. You know, this this reminds me of something I'm from a younger generation, mm -hmm. right? And one of the things that I feel, mm. I, I don't know if you feel that way too, is that my generation, we do not know how to relate with those that have gone ahead of us. Mm. So we want to succeed by ourselves. Mm. We want to prove a point to the older yes, guys that yes, we yes. can. But I, I'm having a rethink. So mm. now, so I believe someone to who is listening to this is having mm. a rethink. So how can they forge effective relationship upwards? To understand that, you know, if I will use the Afri African proverb for, proverb for you, that the older men have rags. The, ex the value of their experience, it doesn't matter what you know now. Your intelligence and your smarts can never compare with their experience. Both of them are, 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 are required. You need their experience. They need your strength and they need your innovation. So we can work together. Mm. It's not a competition and you don't have to put me down to be able to shine. Mm. I've lived my era 
and I've done things. So if you don't feel like having to, the only way you can climb is to dull my own shine. Then we can work together to birth new things. You know, so for me, that's what it is. Um, but I think it's just the culture of wokeness mm. where everybody wants to be the only authority. Um, I have news for you. You are not the only authority. <laughs> As a matter of fact, you know zilch in the place of authority. Mm. Because sometimes authority doesn't come by the smarts. It comes by the experience, the knocks that people have received. Mm. You know, I was listening to someone, I was talking about fathers and sons, mm. and he said many sons don't want to be like their father because their father built houses, but he didn't spend on themselves, on himself while he was alive and he was making money. So the sons will say to themselves, I will not be like my father. Everything, I will enjoy my life. And at the end of the day, they become fathers and their sons don't want to be like them because they blew all the money they made. They did not build a house. Mm -hmm. They left okay. nothing. So there's always something to learn from each other. And that's what I would encourage your, your generation to, to do. do. Yes. Mm, thank you very much, Ma, for that, mm -hmm. for that advice. Mm. I'm, I'm very appreciative. Mm. So it seems like we've come to the end of four weeks in looking at standing under the umbrella, staying under okay. the umbrella of God, under the umbrella of purpose, purpose, under the umbrella of family, and under the umbrella of relationships. relationships. Any man who would go very far in 2024 needs to take this four thing seriously. Sit down, curate what they would look like for a strong and a healthy life, and make sure that you give them the attention and the priority that they deserve to excel and to gain access to all the things that God has promised you in 2024. As we bring this to a close, I'm grateful that you kept the faith with us. Again, remember that this is streaming on YouTube, on Apple Podcasts, all the podcast platforms, Spotify, and all of those places. Remember that if you discover your purpose, you live a powerful life. And if you keep it a, a date with us next month, we'll come back again with very insightful topics and conversations. Thank you so much. God bless you. I look forward to hearing your testimonies. I look forward to dealing with your questions comments. and your comments on this. If this was a blessing to you, also please do not forget to share. We all need to continue to learn and grow together. My name is Bidemi Makmodi and I've been here with John Namaka. Yes. It's a pleasure for us to have Thank brought this to you. Much. Live powerful in 2024. It is in your DNA and within your right to live like that. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Nevertheless. For more information and resources, call 08090563555 or send an email to bidemi at bidemimacmordy.com. Don't forget, discovering your purpose helps you live more powerfully.